Okay, welcome to the 67th lecture of the Otara University of Commerce English Lecture Series. Today we are pleased to welcome the Honorable Andrew P. Thompson. From 1995 to 2001, Mr. Thompson was a member of Australia's Parliament representing the District of Sydney. During his time in Parliament, he served as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Prime Minister John Howard's administration. In 1997 and 1998, he served as Minister of Sport and Tourism and as Minister Assisting the Prime Minister for the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games. Following his distinguished political career, Mr. Thompson returned to practicing law, specializing in international commerce, including natural resources, projects, and other areas. He lives in Fukuoka. The topic of his talk today is surviving in international commerce, government, culture, law, and the news media. Please welcome the Honorable Andrew P. E. Thompson. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me clearly uh, at the back? You can. Thank you kindly. Uh, well, uh, Sean, thanks for the introduction. Uh, there's a lot of politics in that. Uh, I finished my career as a uh, member of parliament in Australia in 2001. So that's already 13 years ago. And since then, uh, I've been a lawyer uh, practicing or working in various parts of the world. Uh, I have a law degree from Australia and also from the United States, uh, Georgetown University in Washington, DC. Uh, but my legal work has been uh, in Australia, in Saudi Arabia, uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, Beijing, uh, and now Japan. And if you ask, uh, why do I live in Fukuoka? Uh, it's because uh, my wife uh, comes from Kyushu. So that's the reason I have an office in Fukuoka. Now, uh, I chose the topic today, uh, surviving in international commerce uh, because this university is a special university for commerce. Shoka uh, Daigaku or Tarusho, I think you call uh, the university. So, in using that uh, framework, Wakugumi, of international commerce, I chose various uh, elements that I think uh, I have uh, experienced. Uh, that is government, culture, uh, the law, and the news media. And so I'm going to talk to you today and I'm going to ask you some questions about these parts of commerce, uh, these elements we're calling. So we have commerce, uh, firm to firm, that is company to company, uh, a transaction for value. So, kachi no aru torihiki, I suppose we'd say in Japanese. So, when we talk about commerce, uh, I mean not NPO work, not charity work, uh, not government work, so kanyo no kosho dewa nai. I mean business. The purpose is profit. Mokuteki wa dieki ga toreru. So, <clears throat> when you talk about uh, business or commerce, it could be a transaction for goods, so shinamono no torihiki, it could be services. Uh, if it's goods, it could be trading, buying and selling, like a shosha, or it could be manufacturing, uh, like a, a large uh, maker of electronics products or heavy machinery, jukogyo, keikogyo, irudo, uh, or it could be services financial services, banking, insurance, it could be professional services, like me, a lawyer or an accountant, uh, or it could be other kinds of services like uh, technology, support, or marketing, advertising. Now, all these things these days are international business transactions. So when you think about commerce, you think about that very wide area of activity. Secondly, when we talk about governments, governments, uh, I guess, uh, can be good, but they can also be a lot of trouble. So uh, you see governments as the regulator, the kiseyo kakeru mono, 
or you see governments uh, as the taxation, taxing transactions, taxing income. So zeju, soze. Uh, and then, of course, all governments are politics, seiji. And sometimes politics, jimoto no seiji, or kuni no seiji, will have some influence on your business transactions. So after you graduate, if you do shushoku and you work for a company in Japan, large or small, and you have international business, business outside Japan, or kaigai no toriki, then you will have governments in your life somewhere, tax or regulation. The other aspect is uh, culture. Culture informs everything. You can have a transaction with a counterparty in another language or another religion. All these things are different culture. Maybe the culture of Hokkaido is different from the culture of Kyushu, where I live. I don't know. Certainly the culture of Tokyo and or Kansai and Kanto seem to me to be different. And when you go overseas, the differences in the culture are much, much bigger. So we'll talk about language, uh, beliefs, uh, preferences uh, as part of culture in business. Uh, law. Law is my profession. So what I call gyomu. Law is rules and it's enforcement. Now enforcement probably means litigation, like sosho, or the shiho, tezuki. But rules, rules, there are so many rules. There are global rules, there are national rules, there are local rules, and there are sometimes what you call, we might call sector rules, like gyoshu no ru. Certain rules will be different in banking, and insurance and manufacturing, etc., etc. So uh, we're going to talk about that in more detail. And then finally, the news media. So information uh, and influence. When when something is published in the newspapers, for example, <clears throat> here is yesterday's Nikkei Shimbun. Now every day in Nagata Chou. They will read this. The Jiminto, the Minshuto, the Ishinto, the Hiroyoto, Watakshino to, Anatomo to, everybody reads the Nikkei. And in Washington, D.C., everybody reads the New York Times or the Washington Post. And so the, the articles and, and, and the shasetsu, the editorials, they all have influence on government. And government will have influence on you when you do your international, uh, your international transactions. So, um, briefly, surviving in international commerce. I think international commerce is necessary, but it's never easy. Now, in Japan, we have a problem with the Jinko Gensho, correct? The population is shrinking. So every year, it's more and more difficult to do business in Japan because the market is shrinking. Now, some businesses are growing, like Kaigo and Irio, but a lot of other businesses are facing difficulty. So if you do Shushoku and you have a, a career ahead of you at a company, then you probably must look outside Japan for growth. So, <clears throat> I don't think there's a choice. Uh, and um, just last week, in my own office, uh, I helped to complete uh, Torihiki, a transaction between an Australian coffee shop meat pie chain. So, Niku Pai Toko Hino Chain Ten and Nihon no Ote Duskin. Duskin, very good company from Osaka, Mr. Donuts. So Duskin, they bought the rights, the candy for Japan, for this Australian coffee shop chain. So for my shuten or tenkai. 
So that's an example of a Japanese company going outside Japan to buy the Chitekizai san, the intellectual property, to do business back in Japan. So secondly, uh, there's a lot of competition. So Kyoso Tosho competition and obstacles. When you go uh, outside Japan to do business in America or Africa or Europe, Australia, most people obey the rules. But dangerous people don't. So <clears throat> you will encounter unfair, illegal behavior. So Kohei Muho na Koi So that means that there are very serious risks when you go overseas to do business. It's very risky and in some places it's very dangerous. So uh, let's ask if you have to take a risk, so Torihiki no risk ga yamo e nai koto, how do you understand the risks? Well, I think my experience is understanding the risk is a combination of experience and research. So, keiken to chosa no kumi awase. That's how you understand the risk. And if you're the first ones there, where do you get the experience? If your company tells you to you know, please visit Myanmar, and uh, sell something from Japan, something from Hokkaido in Myanmar. Well, the history of commerce in Myanmar is very short. It was a Heisa Kuni, Heisa Koku, until recently. So how do you understand the risk of a new country? Well, very difficult. So these are the things that uh, you must uh, prepare for uh, as you you, you, you go, you enter into these international commercial transactions. So let's talk a little bit more about governments. Now, governments uh, respond to politics. So every government, uh, democratic governments or undemocratic governments, every government has politics. Somebody, various habatsu, uh, competing for influence. And very often, if you are the foreign company, the Gaishike no Kaisha, then you will face what we might call local preference. So, for example, if you go to uh, even Australia as a Japanese company, will the Australian government give the Australian company preference? The Jimoto no Yusei. Or will the Australian government be fair? between the Japanese company and the Australian company? Well, sometimes uh, even democratic governments are not fair. So there are rules, uh, international law, international rules, to try and make it fair between the foreign company and the local company. But always be careful. So, Secondly, tax. Now, these days, many governments, maybe not all, but many governments have a very heavy debt. So, I say, Europa, America, uh, many countries. So, when you, as a, a foreign company, you go to these countries, you do some business, those governments will try and collect tax. Because all governments need zeishu, uh, tax revenue. And when you plan your business in international commerce, you must have a tax plan. So you must check the tax first before you do the business. Because sometimes uh, you get a a tax surprise and usually they're bad surprises not good so that's uh, something always to bear in mind regulation she say uh, often driven by the media uh, many 
many transactions, many businesses these days have a very uh, heavy burden of compliance. So, again, if you're doing a simple, you think it's a simple kind of business, you might discover that uh, the regulation of that business is very complicated. Now, look at the regulation of food or pharmaceuticals, shokuhin, toyaki. They are especially difficult because it, the influence of these products is on the health of, of consumers. So, shoisha no so, if you're dealing in a food product, so for example, if you want to sell from Hokkaido, uh, kombu, for example, you want to sell the best kombu from Hokkaido to Europe or the United States or uh, some uh, developing world country, well, the first thing they will say to you is, what about Fukushima? What about Fukushima? What about the Hoshase? Now, in my case, I had the experience this year helping uh, uh, one family from uh, Yame uh, in uh, Fukuoka Ken to try and sell some Sencha to Switzerland. And Yame Cha is very good tea, but what was the problem? Oh, Fukushima. And we said, but uh, Yame is very long way from Fukushima. There's no Hosha Sen in Kyushu. Ah, but we needed the Shomei Sho, we needed the Shinsa, lots of different regulation. And I think the same, the same problem is now almost all food products in Japan, even if you're a long way from Fukushima, the, the, the compliance or the regulation in the, in the foreign markets will include this kind of check. It's more atamani but uh, it's unavoidable. So these kind of things uh, these days are a part of, of regulation. And the media, it's their job. It's not uh, it's any, uh, not criticizing the media. It's their job to report uh, risks. And so the reputation after such a disaster uh, results in regulation. Now finally, uh, under governments, we should talk about uh, free trade. So uh, TPP. Uh, TPP is uh, in the news very often. So let me ask some of you, if I may. Sean, may I ask a question of yes. the students? Absolutely. OK, well, I'll start at the front. I can't ask you gentlemen. You're not students. <laughs> uh, I'll go to, back to the first row. Now, uh, young, young, young sir, tell me about TPP. Yes, trading treaty. It's a free trade treaty. Do you work in our Joya? But uh, will TPP succeed? Ima tayen de jo, bekok do nihon. Why? Japanese side, the government wants to protect the agricultural uh, economy. And on the American side, uh, the American government wants to protect the car, the motor car industry. And I think also some, Tokyo, some pharmaceutical patents. Anyway, it's a big problem. And uh, these days, free trade uh, agreements treaties, there's a very big risk of failure. And if the negotiations fail, 
then it's very difficult for you. If, if there's a treaty, do you go in your Kyoto? It's very good. It's very good for commerce. But if the treaty fails, or the Kosho ga mono ni narakereba, then it's going to be difficult. So, let's move on. Culture. Now, um, my experience, I'm 53 years old. So, when I was a university student, the President of the United States was Ronald Reagan. And the Prime Minister of Britain was Margaret Thatcher. And these two leaders did a very interesting thing. They changed the policy of their governments to deregulate. They did Nieka, privatization. They reduced regulation in many different areas. And as a result of that, partly, and also I think as a result of Silicon Valley in California, there was a huge advance in international business. And a word was invented to describe this. We call it globalization. Suddenly, it was very easy to, 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 to spread the brands. So the, the food brands, KFC, McDonald's, Starbucks, uh, and in, uh, in, in, in goods trade, uh, suddenly uh, the Sony Walkman, followed by the Apple, all the Hewlett Packard products, they, suddenly everything was global or it became more and more international. So you could go to one city and see the same shops. I mean, the, the shops you see in Beijing are the same as in Montesango. The products are the same. And so my experience growing up in, in that period was that culture almost vanished. And the spread of English as a language of commerce, again, was very rapid. People began to attend universities to study MBAs. This became very popular from the 1980s. So culture, in my time, got less and less important. But somehow or other, I think now that's changing. And it's turning around in a strange way. I don't really understand it, but uh, national pride, uh, religious <coughs> fundamentalism, uh, people thinking about history, uh, it's suddenly more risky compared to 10 years or 20 years ago. And <clears throat> when you're doing business in these different cultures, um, it can, it's going to be a little more difficult than it was, I think, in the past. I don't know why. I think we're in the middle of this, this change. So from the period where culture was diminishing, now suddenly it seems as though it's turning around. So when you're doing business in different cultures and as part of your studies here at Tarusho, uh, I'm sure you spend a lot of time thinking and learning about this. But for example, in my uh, experience in the last uh, 10, 15 years, I had an office in uh, Saudi Arabia, which is a very strict uh, Muslim country, perhaps the most strict. Uh, five times a day, everything would stop for prayers. And <clears throat> the, the culture in the office was quite unusual. Uh, I remember very clearly, I went to visit the minister for mining. Uh, my company was uh, doing a copper mine project at Dorkozan in Saudi Arabia. So every month I went to see the minister and uh, discuss about our project. And on his desk in, in the ministry, he had many papers about the mines, the Keiki no Kizuki. And next to the papers was the Quran, open there, right next to the, the, uh, the, the government uh, documents, there was the Quran. And every five minutes, he would read the Quran. Read the Quran, and then talk about the Gorkosa. I thought, well, this is very strange. But no, this is quite normal. 
And then after that, I went to work in uh, Beijing. Uh, by the way, today, uh, how many students from China? Okay, we'll talk about that a bit later. But my experience was uh, Beijing, and uh, Beijing is 99% uh, Gung Chang Da, 99% uh, party. So, Ming Chang no, what do you say? Kuni no, Kyung San to no, 99%. Ming Chang o 1%, maybe. Shanghai is much better. Shanghai is much more Ming Chang. So the culture of business in Beijing was very much about the party and about the shigarami, kanke, uh, Different culture in, Be in Shanghai, different culture in Guangzhou, and of course a different culture in Hong Kong. So <clears throat> how does this affect uh, the law? Well, interesting. In some countries, uh, it's very easy to have a litigation. So, soshoga uh, hayai. In other countries, soshoga mudatsukai. It's it's a waste of time going to the court, like Saudi Arabia, because it takes too long. <coughs> if you go to the court in Saudi Arabia or Egypt or uh, the Islamic countries, it might be three years to get a result. A waste of time. So you must do negotiation <coughs> if there's a problem. Uh, but in other places, uh, the United States, and not every state. Don't forget, the United States is the United States. So, some states it's more uh, easy to litigate, and other states uh, you don't. You just negotiate. So culture can make a difference uh, to the law, and that makes a difference uh, to your business. So let's talk about the law in a little bit more uh, detail. Let me see. Um, global law, uh, international law, the, the WTO. Uh, let's ask some more questions. Uh, next, next group of uh, students. Tell me about the WTO. The, the first W is world, T is a trade, O is organization. Now, okay, fine. You don't wake up every morning thinking, God damn, that WTO. <laughs> God damn, what am I going to do about it? Well, let me tell you. If, if there's trade between two countries and the government of one country uh, imposes a rule which is unfair, then you can uh, complain to the WTO. It, it has a court. It's like a court. So, for example, if, uh, if you're selling kombu from Hokkaido to Australia, and the Australian government uh, prohibits the import, the Yunyukichi, against the Hokkaido kombu, why? Can they do that? Well, yeah, but they must have a scientific basis. And if there's no scientific basis, if it's Talanohogoshiki, just mere protectionism, then you can use the, the rules of the WTO to complain. And you go to the court in Geneva, and after about one year, you get a, a judgment. And the judgment says to the Australian government, remove the prohibition. So you can do that. So. <clears throat> is about trade rules. Now, the next one, uh, IP. What's IP? Uh, your neighbor, uh, madam. IP. In the middle of the night, you wake up, oh my God, IP. All right, well, I'll tell you what IP is. IP is that. That is Otarubia. Okay? IP is intellectual property. Okay? Intellectual property. Uh, very, very important. And the protection 
of IP is a very large part of international commerce these days. So the rules um, to protect the Otaru beer name. So for example, if I, I go back to Australia and I start a small company making beer and I decide my company will be called Otaru Beer, but in Australia. Okay, no, no connection with Otaru here. But I just decide to steal the name. Who, how can they protect it? Now, notice one thing. There's no English. It says Otaru in Kanji and Biru in Katakana. So, how do you protect the name Otaru Biru? in Romaji, in English. Well, you, you use the law. You use the shōhyō, trademarks. So you, you register the trademark, uh, like Starbucks. You register the name and the logo. And if, if I start uh, my coffee shop in uh, Tasmania, or Melbourne, you know, called uh, Starbucks, then uh, Starbucks will sue me in the court in Australia. But can can the Otaru Beer Company, how can they go to the court in, in Melbourne or Sydney? Well, they can, because the IP rules are international rules. And even if the trademark, the shōhyō for this beer, this is registered in Japan, but it has a Koksai Tekina Hongo, international protection. So, um, you know, if we have uh, Otaru Kombu, yeah, it must be pretty good. I can see it from the train. It's just right down by the beach. Really good Kombu. Now, same thing. If, if, if I harvest the Kombu in Tasmania, in Australia, and I call it Otaru Kombu, oh, how can they stop me? It's a... So, these things uh, are part of what you call global law these days. Likewise, financial regulation. So, if the Hokkaido Ginkgo is doing business in Hong Kong or Taiwan, or, uh, if you, if Otaru Beer, this is uh, Ayataka, um, there it is, if, if we take Otaru Beer and try and sell it in Australia, then maybe the Hokkaido Ginkgo will give us uh, credit, trade financing. So if the Hokkaido Ginkgo wants to go overseas, there will be regulation of that banking business. Now, regulation is expensive because compliance. Uh, you call compliance, I guess, a junshu, kisei no junshu, complying with the regulation. Well, <coughs> If you have to uh, comply with the regulation, somebody must uh, pay for it. I've got a Shanai no compliance tantosha. Shanai no compliance yosa. All these things are cost uh, to the business. So, um, part of law these days, law is rules, and rules need compliance. So, hori to a kisei, te kisei wa junshu compliance. The other thing uh, these days you see is the using law as an economic weapon. Here's I think in a bookie. So sometimes uh, governments will use the law to stop you. Oh, waza waza. They'll stop your business using the law. It might be a docking law, anti-monopoly laws or it might be a tax law, and so you have to be very careful. So if you uh, are doing your business in another country, um, you must ask yourself, um, you know, do I need to check the law first? And if you do, you need a lawyer like me, and it's very expensive. I mean, I'm a more oh, pepe and I'm English. So I'm not expensive, but the big Oteno Horitsu Jimisho are more. Menotama Gatobi Deru. It's 
very expensive to, to use uh, a lawyer in New York or London or Geneva or Hong Kong, even Sydney or Melbourne, uh, to check the law first. But to avoid this uh, using the law as a weapon against you, you need the legal advice first. Sometimes also extraterritorial use of the law. So if, for example, the government of the United States thinks, or, or the, the Hormuzhul, the Department of Justice, uh, thinks that there's some uh, cartel or some doksen tekinakui uh, between two Japanese companies, uh, they can do a sochi, some measure, against those companies from, from Washington, D.C. But in Japan, if the companies are, how do you say, uh, if they're planning some, uh, some monopoly, uh, monopolistic practice, like uh, fixing the price, like dango, eh? like that, then extraterritorial. The government in Beijing, or the government in Brussels, from the EU, they can do, well, they can uh, try and stop you, even in another country, outside their kankatsukuiki, outside their jurisdiction. So, uh, these kind of uh, extraterritorial use of the law, uh, FCPA. Now, this, um, this is a four-letter uh, thing that uh, I wonder anybody here would know. But I'm going to test it. So, the gentleman with the uh, scarf, the FCPA, what is the FCPA? You know, you're walking down the street in Otaru, you know, you're thinking of having a beer, and damn, there's that FCPA. I saw it. I'll tell you what it is, it's the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Okay, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. It's a US law. And the US law says that you cannot give a financial incentive to a government official. You cannot bribe somebody or their family in another country for business. Now, if that's a US law, well, why would we worry about it here in Ontario? Good question. But if, if a, a company is uh, raising capital, Japanese company, raises capital in New York, gets a loan from a US bank, has any connection with the US in their business, if they have a branch in California or New York, then that act applies to them. So if the Japanese company is giving a gift to the daughter or the son of a government official in Abu Dhabi, and the US company loses the contract, then the US company will use that law against you. Yeah, you're right, that's you. You went to Abu Dhabi, you worked for Toshiba, you gave the money to the daughter of, of, of the deputy minister, and you work for Toshiba, oh boy, the Department of Justice is coming after you. Yeah, and that they'll search your email, and, 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 and your Twitter account, and your Facebook and everything. I mean, what I mean is that they will come after you. And this, this law is a very serious law. It applies to companies in Australia. Uh, I, I know some people who, they paid money in Dubai to get some contracts. And suddenly, they had this. And they never thought, why would we have this? Because the US construction companies missed out on the business. So, that's an example of the law. Now, law as a barrier to commerce. Not, not every law is a bad law. I mean, if we can stop corruption, it's good, because corruption is unfair. Uh, likewise, the uh, Doki Hall, the anti-monopoly law. You know, if, if big companies are using the law uh, to, to squash small companies, then that's bad. So we need the governments to stop the big companies you know, discriminating against the small ones. So many of these regulations 
whilst they're expensive, uh, they have a good purpose. So, <clears throat> but you, you have to know about them. Uh, Amakudari. We, we all know about Amakudari in Kasumi Gaseki. But Amakudari is not just a Jap But by the way, what is that Amakudari? Now, the, the, the girl from Shanghai. What's Amakudari? Yeah, what do you think it is? Well, Amakudari means that uh, 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 Guanyang, Kanyo, uh, official of government, when they retire, they join the company. So they come from heaven. Amakarakudari. So it's uh, like Tianxia. Not quite, but after working for the government, if a person works for a large company, they get a nice salary, they get a nice car, and then suddenly the government or the department is, is treating that company maybe very softly. So is that a bribe or corrupt behavior? Well, maybe it is, maybe it's not. So Amakudari, it happens in many countries. And if large companies, pharmaceutical companies, uh, manufacturers, whatever, if they hire former regulators, is that corrupt conduct? Now, if we're a small company, you know, our company is Otaru Beer, right? Or Otaru Kombu. We, we can't hire somebody from Kasumi Gaseki. It's too expensive. <coughs> and uh, so how can we compete as a small company against these big guys? They hire all these former bureaucrats and regulators to make it life easy for them. What about us? Now that's one of the problems. You know, Amakodari is not illegal, but it, it's a fact of life. And in international commerce, if you're a small company, watch out, because the big companies do this. Uh, now finally, let's talk about the news media. Uh, the news media are, I think, a window into change. Now, regulation changes, and, and business is going to change. And your job is to try and see the change ahead. So when you do Shushoku, and you join these Japanese companies, or foreign companies, then, you know, as a, a, a new employee, starting up the ladder, you, know, you can tell your boss, Oh, you know, we think the regulations are going to change. We think new products are coming. So where, where do you see this? Where do you see the future? And very often it's in the news media. So the question is, uh, which news media? So let's have a bit of a look. Um, this is the Financial Times. The Financial Times is a British newspaper. It is very influential. Uh, if you look up the ft.com, it's published from London, but it's actually edited in Asia and in America. They have uh, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Seoul, Beijing. So if you read the FT, you get very good uh, global news. It's not just British news. It's very, very influential. So in Washington, in Brussels, uh, and in many embassies, uh, many government people will read the Financial Times. And certainly in the Kiyu Gyokai, uh, in the financial industry, banking, securities, insurance, the Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal, these two newspapers, nowadays they're online of course, uh, and of course in Japan, uh, the Nikkei Shimbun, these are the newspapers you must read if you're doing a lot of international business, because the regulation, the, the way governments are thinking, you can see them here, and of course in China, I think Caixin, what do you think? Oh, well, okay. It's, is this the most influential? Well, maybe not the most, but it's a very good source of news in China. Because it's... It's, it's, it's private. It's not 
a government uh, media. It's private media, business media in China. So these um, <clears throat> these uh, sources of uh, uh, of news and uh, of, um, of of trends in regulation. These are very important. So the global news media, the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, the Nikkei, Saishin, and of course all the online media. So for example, in the United States, you have the uh, Democrat Party and the Republican Party, two big parties, the Kyoto and the Minshuto. Each party has a columnist. Well, not formally, it's not Seishiki. But each party is represented by certain columns. So, for example, in the New York Times, if you read the column by Paul Krugman, his opinion is very much the Min Shuto Democrat Party. And if you look at the Wall Street Journal, you look for Gerald Saib, uh, Brett Stevens. These columnists are the Republican uh, representative columnists. So you can see what each party is thinking or saying about today's uh, controversy or today's uh, issue by reading the columns. Uh, for Europe, uh, there are a number of columnists, but my, my favorite one is in the Daily Telegraph, which is a London newspaper, and his name is Ambrose Evans Pritchard, AEP. Anyway, he writes about uh, EU uh, politics and uh, very, very good information about uh, what's happening in the EU. So, <clears throat> a strategic planning tool. Don't forget that uh, in the newspapers, not everything is, is news. Because you sometimes you have uh, articles about uh, new products. Uh, what... Uh, What's the latest uh, leisure product or latest electronics? And uh, you have news about products. So if your company is uh, making a health food product, a like kombu, um, you, know, you need to know what's happening in, uh, what, what's the most popular new product in uh, New York, or California, or Paris. Sometimes, very often, you see these products in the newspapers. A review, you know, Hyoka, Hyoronka, writing something. And you should read that, because that's, that's the, the saishin no jōbō about these products. The, the, most, the freshest, best information about these products is often in these big newspapers. Um, <clears throat> so, consumer preferences. Again, uh, where do, you, where do you see the future for these products? It's somewhere in the media. Because the media is just a source of information. So, um, <clears throat> let me think. Um, every country has a dominant media. So, in China, you have uh, the party media. You have the minkan or non-party media. In the United States, a huge spectrum, very wide spectrum, from big newspapers like New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and then many blogs, blogs about everything. Uh, and if you're working in a particular product, whether it's health foods or, or manufacturing or services, uh, you should read the blogs about that gyoshu, that, that sector, because blogs are free, and uh, <clears throat> it's amazing the information you pick up, uh, which uh, should, again, be part of, of your planning in the business. And finally, the media and the PR strategy. Now tell me, this uh, last two, one or two or three months, we had some, uh, some significant disasters for companies. Uh, one company which suffered a bad disaster was Benesse. Now, Benesse suffered a, what was the problem? Somebody stole the data about the students in Benesse, and they, they sold it. In fact, the guy that sold the data is in the court today, Kyo Tokyo Chiyosai Bansho. 
the man that stole the data. And when that was in the media, uh, Benesse had a big media PR problem. Now, the other uh, company, tell me another company. We need a, now, Madam, can you tell me? You're sitting in the front. So, uh, this is a big risk. <laughs> job? Yeah. It's a risk. Yeah? Very good. No, no, we'll give you a reward. You get the chance to answer the question, which restaurant chain had a big PR problem this year? Restaurant chain starts with M. M. Yellow, M. <laughs> yeah, McDonald's. Right. Yeah, remember the King and Gideon chicken? Oh, yes. Yeah, right, okay. So McDonald's was buying chicken from this factory in Shanghai. And the factory was owned by a company from America. Or was it Illinois or somewhere? Uh, anyway, there's a problem with the chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And even, you know, Najimi no family mark. Yeah, the chicken. Eh? But McDonald's suffered big problems. And Ima Akaji, they showed McDonald's Japan because of that problem. So, um, yesterday uh, I was uh, sitting in the hotel in Otaru because of the typhoon watching the TV, and there was a, a PR, an advertisement from McDonald's on the TV saying, you know, shopping in one Zen, blah, 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 because they had a, a problem. Now, their, their PR and media strategy is to repair the image using the TV. So, uh, there was uh, some uh, TV scene of the uh, I think the McDonald's Shacho, she's an American lady. Yeah, anyway, and some other staff. Everybody was happy and laughing. Oh, it's lovely. And so, <laughs> McDonald's is trying to repair its image because it's Akaji, it's Diane. Yeah? Now, I, I still have a Big Mac. I don't eat the chicken because it's my wish to I have the karage, oita. But uh, I like a Big Mac, sure. And I like the French fries. Uh, and the coffee is pretty good too, but the problem was that McDonald's suffered this uh, this damage from the, the Shanghai problem. But Family Mart seemed to be fine. Family Mart, I don't think they suffered much of a problem. Maybe you know, in Family Mart, nobody buys the chicken anyway. Oh, I'm money. Where should I go? Oh, I don't know. But uh, anyway, um, so as part of your uh, international business career. Uh, Never forget the news media. And, you know, let, let's be honest. Many Japanese companies, the senior managers, do not read enough international media. They just don't. So you, when, when you do Shushoku, you come from Tarusho, you, know, you, you should say, yeah, yeah, you know, we should look at the, the these large media uh, sources and also the blogs. Now, finally, just uh, I guess some general advice: uh, small companies can grow big. So, Otaru Beer could be a big beer company one day. Maybe they don't want to, but they can. So, small companies can win with new products and even M&A. Uh, small companies can buy other small companies and grow bigger by. Uh, M and A, <coughs> or what do we call it? Um, yeah, that's right. Um, so generally speaking, my experience of my clients is if the foundations are strong, so financial foundations and the technical side of things, then the small company can survive. Now, big companies, don't worry about them. <coughs> if they make mistakes and they they neglect, like Sony, Sony neglected its technical foundations. And look at Sony. But financially, they're still OK. Mm -hmm. uh, research and investment. If you're doing business overseas, you have to do your research. In fact, you, you need more research for Kaigai Toriyeki than for Kokunai. It's too easy 
in, in Japan. I mean, competition is hard, but going overseas, it really requires a lot of research. And when I say investment, uh, I mean investment in the markets and in the people uh, and, of course, R&D. So when you decide to hire somebody, you, know, you make a shten in, in, in California. You have to hire a manager for your branch in California. Who do you hire? You, know, you have to give some your son budget for the salary and all these things. So that's an investment in a person to grow your business. Uh, likewise, you need to do the research, as I say. Um, <clears throat> expect trouble. <laughs> you should expect trouble. Uh, and you have to manage this risk. So when we talk about uh, uh, managing risk, we talked about experience and research. Um, for a small company, uh, never negotiate with one partner. Always have a choice. If you have one Tori Ikisaki, one partner, then you will suffer. Especially if it's a big, big partner. You need more than one. You have to have competition among the negotiating partners. Uh, that's part of managing the risk. Um, managing your risks uh, also includes your own shareholders. So the kabunushi. And certainly, if you have a, a loan, if your company is borrowing money in Japan, then you must keep your bank happy. And that means reporting to the bank, reporting to the kabunushi, the shareholders. You, you, you have to keep your capital safe. Because if, if your shihonkin, or chotatsu, the, the supply of capital is in danger, then the whole company is in danger. Uh, also, I think, don't think first about the profit. Think about the product. I mean, a good product um, should earn a good profit. Uh, the reason why we buy the Big Mac uh, is because it's pretty good. Uh, it's, it's a good product. They've had many, many years to develop it. And the price you pay for it, Ropiakuen, Goyakuen, is pretty good. So the McDonald's profit will be okay if the product is good. And the same with the Otaru beer. If it's good beer, people will buy it and the company will profit. Um, the other thing is, I'd say, apart from this, is don't, don't be scared about uh, going overseas. Sometimes it's scary. It's quiet, eh? but don't 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 give up, because one thing I, I've learned in my experience is that uh, large companies, big companies, are very often quite stupid, or they're shincho, very very cautious, and they make mistakes because they're too cautious, and you know the kakaricho, the kacho, and the bucho, and all these guys they want to kind of climb up. So they're very, very sort of ishibashi tataki, you know, too cautious. Whereas the small companies say, what the hell, let's just try. And so many times the small company will defeat the large company in a product competition just because they're hungry and they're not kind of scared, over-cautious. So, of course, you know, managers and if you become... You have to manage these risks. Because if a small company fails, sometimes that's the end of the company. Big companies can survive a failure, or two, or three, like Sony, still alive, somehow. Um, but some small companies can't, often. It's too dangerous. So uh, these are some of the things that uh, I've learned from my own experience uh, and watching my clients when I represent them as a lawyer. Uh, so, if it's uh, been of some interest and some use in just a one hour or 60 minute discussion, then I'm very grateful for the opportunity. So, thank you and uh, let's have some questions, Sean. Sure. Right, first, let's thank our speaker.